is going on, Governor? It's just cool here, and today we're bringing you a full commander guide for Belisarius. That's right, we promised we would bring you commander guides for all of the new commanders after they became available, and we are on that path. If you like commander guides, you should totally like and subscribe, so we're going to help you get the most bang for your buck with these commanders, and there really is a lot to talk about. We are a sponsored creator for Rise of Civilizations, and let's get right into it. We've got a bunch of things we want to talk about when we review a commander. First, we take a look at their skills. And even if you're not personally using this commander, it's good to refresh yourself on the skills so that you can best counter them when you see them on the battlefield or in the Alliance Battlegrounds. Then we will review the talents that you might choose if you're using this commander to how you can unlock them. And then from there, what are the very best pairings for this commander? I think there are some. Interesting choices here, and we'll talk all about them. So, the skills are interesting on this commander. They are a cavalry, peacekeeping, and mobility commander. The skills are as follows. First skill decreases the target attack by a max of 30%, which is a lot. They reduce the defense by 30%, which is a lot. And they do a damage factor max of 450, which is solid. I like it. Overall, I want to call your attention to a couple things. The first is that because they're reducing the defense of the target, it's good if you're using this commander as the primary and then you have a big damage dealer as the secondary. That way you reduce their defense and then you hit them hard. This buff only lasts for two seconds, though, is a very short window. Um, in my perfect world, I like to pair someone who's got a two-second debuff with a commander that generates a lot of rage. That way you can actually keep that debuff rolling rather than having it fall off the target. The second skill is irresistible. That's the name of the skill. <laughs> Increases your damage to barbarians and other neutral units by a max of 35%. Yeah, this is a sweet peacekeeper. The next skill increases the defensive cavalry by a max of 15%, which is a ton, and increases your march speed by 25% after you leave battle. This commander is going to be amazing for going from one barbarian pack to another. Uh, they are made for exactly that activity. The next skill, Oblique Tactics, makes it so that when the target army has been reduced to less than 50% of strength, increase the damage you deal to them by... 25% at max. This is pretty solid when you're battling barbarians. It's guaranteed they're going to get that low. PvP, this has some interesting applications, maybe? Maybe? You got to kind of hunt for weaker targets, but I suppose that is doable. You want to be the one that finishes the fights, not the one that starts them. And by the way, if you're not one of the alphas in your alliance, if you're not one of the stronger players, hmm, yeah, this might be a fine strategy for you. The next... Uh, skill is the expertise skill. It is obtained when you max out all four other skills, and it takes it so that you now have a cavalry defense lift from 15% to 30%. That's insane. And the march speed goes from 25% to 50% for 10 seconds after leaving battle. Now, I want to call your attention to something here, which is that Pelagius, his expertise skill is giving a total of 10 percentage points of stats. It's split 5% attack and 5% defense. But over here, I mean, you're getting 15% defense and more. Wow. That's really strong. That's exceptionally strong. Um, I like everything that's happening here. Overall, I think this commander is very mobile. Uh, I question how you how much utility you'll get from this mobility in PvP, largely because um, just because you're running away from a target doesn't mean that you've left combat. If they're chasing you and they stay near you, then you may not be able to leave combat and may not even be able to take advantage of this at all. That said, if your target's fighting something else and then you walk away, yeah, you could get out of combat pretty quickly, and I think that's pretty cool. Combined with some of the other things that you could get from the talent trees, you might be able to do some pretty cool stuff in PvP. Overall... I personally think I will use this commander as a peacekeeper. So let's get a look at those talents and talk about where you might go with this. I mentioned earlier there's peacekeeping mobility and the cavalry tree. If you're in the early game or you're just starting to build out this peacekeeper, I would start, uh, and by the way, if you're interested in battling 
barbarians, I would start by getting insight, make my way very rapidly to quick study and then trophy hunter. From there, I would grab killer instinct and domination, which I think are very powerful against neutral units. And if this is your rally leader, Marty, Mighty Force is a mighty fine pickup. I would also consider thoroughbreds simply for the march speed and getting around from point A to point B. Although I'll say this, with this commander, you already have so much march speed for hunting barbarians. I don't know that you need more to get to the packs in the first place. These talents off to the side, double-edged sword and curing chant, I don't find to be particularly effective. I would probably pass on those. If you did have a mixed army, that is definitely the place to start for battling barbarians, even if you have a cavalry army, that is the place to start um, in the peacekeeping tree. I would then supplement with talents that you can find in the cavalry tree, starting with Undying Fury. I love Rage Restoration. Uh, I'm no uh, stranger to that concept, nor am I shy about saying it. So definitely recommend making your way over there. And from this point, you've kind of got a lot of flexibility. One quality of life Talent might be charge, which makes it so when you're below 50% strength, you'll have 30% more march speed. You're just going to be going all over the map at breakneck speed with this commander when you're battling barbarians, and I think it's pretty sweet. Uh, I would then probably make my way up to disarm. And from there, you're in a pretty good spot. I suppose if you really wanted, you could also pick up some additional march speed and the very first talent available to you in the mobility tree. Now, if you're doing PvP, we've got a different ballgame entirely, and, you know, there's sort of two routes you could go, the cavalry route or the mobility route. I'm a big fan of the cavalry route, and this, of course, depends on if you're doing the Mighty Governor or if you're talking about Alliance Battlegrounds. Now, for Alliance Battlegrounds, I'd probably steer you in the direction of the cavalry route, and I'll explain why in just a moment. If you were going this route, one of the very things I'd want to pick, first things I want to pick up is charge. Charge is very important, um, even if you're using the mobility tree as the primary, because once your army gets weak, you really need to get away. You need to get away to save your troops from going to the hospital, and then you have to spend a bunch of speed-ups to get them back. So I love charge for Alliance Battlegrounds. I would make my way rapidly up to Rally and Cry, and you could then supplement with Undying Fury if you wanted, and if you think you're going to be chasing people down, which you probably will be in Alliance Battlegrounds, then Equestrian Excellence could be excellent. Should I just keep using the words that are in the name of the skill when I'm describing how good or bad I think they are? From there, I would make my way over to Hasty Departure, which I think will be handy to have, but there's only so many places on the battleground that you can actually take advantage of this particular talent. I actually have an affinity for Vortex for the Alliance Battlegrounds. If you're going to be fast and targeting weak armies, slowing them is really important and makes your job easier. Now, if you wanted to make your commander very well specialized for the Mighty Governor event, and what you really want to do is terrorize farmers, which is a thing you could do, I would rapidly make my way to Hasty Departure. I would then make my way to Charge, because once you get weak or if someone chases you down, this is how you get away relatively unscathed. From there, you could pick up Vortex to slow down your enemies, which I think is pretty handy. Um, I then would consider, I don't know, I would probably go to Triumphant March because you're going to be defeating lots of armies. This is just so wicked. You're going to move so fast. It's going to be ridiculous. Um, and, you know, I... I don't love time management, so I probably wouldn't be picking up Alacrity, and I probably wouldn't be picking up time management. If you really wanted to be basically untouchable, Alacrity seems like a fine pickup. And from there, you're almost all the way to time management anyways. Maybe you just get it. Off in the cavalry tree, and now you've got to be pretty high level to be picking up these additional talents, you could make your way to Equestrian Excellence if you think you're going to have any trouble whatsoever chasing targets down. I don't think that you will, though. Instead, I might make my way to Undying Fury for the Rage, and there's this one point in Peacekeeping for 3% March Speed that seems pretty darn good to me. If you really wanted to push the boundaries with March Speed, instead of going for Equestrian Excellence and Undying Fury, I still probably would get charged, but you could make your way all the way over to Thoroughbreds, and that would give you a solid 18% additional March Speed in the Peacekeeping Tree. 
definitely is on plan for terrorizing farmers. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. All right. I think that pretty well covers the talents and the skills. Let's talk about how you actually unlock this commander. You can find him in some of the usual places. Uh, you can get them from the keys, silver and gold. They will show up in the expedition. I know they show up in the rotating six slots in the expedition, but I don't know if they're a weekly commander. I haven't seen them show up that way yet. Um, and after you do have them unlocked, and it'll take 10 sculptures to accomplish that, you can then use your universal sculptures to further level up their skills. On the topic of leveling up skills, I would max out the skills in this order in a perfect world. I would max the first skill, then I would max the second skill, then uh, I would probably max the third and the fourth. That is if you're using this commander for PvE. If you're going to be using this commander for PvP, I would max the first skill and then jump them up probably to three stars or four stars uh, before applying more skills. And that's just because you really aren't interested in having those skills land on Irresistible, which only matters for killing barbarians. So who do you pair this commander with to get max value? There's a couple really interesting choices. Some of these are very obvious. Now, because we do have uh, cavalry bonuses on this commander, you really want to be rocking a full cavalry army. To accomplish that at the legendary tier, I would be looking at a commander like Minamoto, possibly with Minamoto as the, well, probably as the secondary. What you want to do is have Belisarius' skill go first. It reduces the target's armor or their defense. And then you hit them with Minamoto's big nuke. The same will be true for Cao Cao. Um, the reason you might consider having Minamoto as the primary is because he has the skill tree available. But legendaries are harder to level up. They require way more experience and their stars are harder to get. One option you could consider conceivably for open field is Frederick. And I think this would be okay. You'd probably still want to use Belisarius as the primary to have that defense reduction hit prior to having the additional skill damage hit from Barbarossa. Going down to the epic tier, there's really two kinds of commanders we're talking about. The ones that are generalists and the ones that are focused on a specific type of unit, and that is a cavalry unit. In the generalist category, you've got commanders like Boudicca, which... You know, they do damage, they generate rage, they heal. I would use Bodica as the secondary commander. That way, the defense reduction hits first. You could also pair with CPO Africanus, and I think that is also kind of interesting. Uh, it doesn't quite matter as much if CPO is the primary or the secondary, and if you prefer the leadership and attack tree, then you would probably want to use CPO as the primary. One other obvious pairing is with Lohar. Lohar is a generalist, but he's also, importantly, a peacekeeper, and man, there's a lot of synergy here. Uh, these two commanders paired together when hunting down barbarians would be totally nuts, and, you know, uh, I'm not sure who I would use as the primary. I, I kind of like Lohar as the primary because you could have the uh, support tree, and you could do, like, rage tanking with uh, Belisarius. I will say this, that... You know, Belisarius doesn't have any healing, so that's not quite as much synergy as I would like, but you could also use Belisarius as the primary, and you'd have less rage restoration, uh, but you would have this defense reduction hit first. I don't know. I probably would stick to Lohar as the primary. The more that I talk in myself into it, I think that's the direction I would go. And man, like that's just a sweet pairing for hunting down barbarians. And lastly, as a generalist, there's Joan of Arc, and Joan of Arc is going to buff your cavalry as well as buff nearby units and restore rage, which is super on plan for what I'd like to see with Belisarius because his debuff is a two-second window. The healing will be nice, and the normal attack damage is also solid. If we're now looking at cavalry-specific commanders... Um, actually, I take it back. There's one more generalist we do need to take a look at, uh, and that is Osman. Uh, Osman is not specific to a certain type of unit, and he's got a huge amount of damage on his skills. Uh, 
what I would probably be doing is using Belisarius as the primary once again, get that defense reduction going, and then you have Osman's new kit. That's the way I would do that. Now, as the dedicated cavalry commanders, you've got two choices at the epic tier. One is Pelagius, and I love what Pelagius is doing. He does a lot of damage, he restores rage, and he heals. Seems good to me. He's also buffing the stats of your cavalry, which is excellent. I would use Pelagius as the secondary in a perfect world. And, you know, uh, I think it's worth mentioning that many of us are just unlocking this commander, Belisarius. We're just starting to skill him up and star him up. Um, in that case, you're going to use him as the secondary because you um, are going to have your troop capacity and number of talent points tied directly to the level of this commander. Now, the final pairing choice would be buy bars, and I think they're a sweet combination together. Uh, you would probably want to use, once again, Belisarius as the primary, buy bars as the secondary. I love the march speed reduction here. It's actually pretty tremendous. There's also a huge boost to cavalry attack, relevant for attacking cities, and uh, when you exit battle, and by the way, Belisarius also cares about exiting battle, you're going to have your march speed boosted even more. Jeez, that's going to be fast. Does it get any faster? I don't know. Uh, if you wanted to benefit from the skill tree and the rage restoration associated with it, you could use buy bars as the primary. You're just not going to benefit as much from the defense reduction that Belisarius is offering. Now, there actually is a pairing here at the uh, blue tier. It's been so long since I've looked at these commanders. I've actually forgotten. <laughs> That Lancelot is a commander. He most certainly is. And you could use Lancelot as the primary if you wanted, because a blue commander is even easier to level up. Um, you know, I, if you're using them seriously, I think Belisarius should be the primary once again for the defense reduction so that the massive nuke from Lancelot gets to do extra damage. I also like that there's some additional cavalry march speed here, which is pretty sweet. You know, one other commander I guess we could look at is the Dragon Lancer. And if you're pairing up with Dragon Lancer, it must be in the very, very, very early game. Your kingdom is like three weeks old or less. I don't know. Dragon Lancer's cool. I use the Cavalry March Speed bonus of 10% to run around the map collecting runes, but that's about the extent to which I use that. So my friends, I know we've covered a lot of ground. I think this new commander is really interesting. I'm going to use him as a peacekeeper, and I'm going to be leveling him up uh, along with other commanders because they get an experience boost from that peacekeeping tree, which is awesome. If there's anything else you think we should have talked about but didn't with this commander, please do leave a comment. And as a new content creator, your comments mean a lot to me. Uh, and until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom.